listening to a message from Mrs. McMahon. In this podcast, I will share actionable strategies for greater happiness and fulfillment. This podcast is personal development, entrepreneurship, life, tackling failure and disappointment, and doing our part to make the world a better place all rolled into one. So tune in, listen up, and get ready to be inspired. Hey, hey, everyone. I am now sitting in my back room on my bed recording my very first podcast, and I couldn't be more excited. Just so y'all know, I'm not using a microphone. I'm using some noise-canceling earphones. And so I've been in three different rooms trying to get the best quality of sound to do this podcast. So I've had like 23 trials, and I still have nerves. Like you would think a podcast would be easier because you don't have to have a video like Facebook Live or YouTube, but it's just as nerve wracking and I really don't know why. But so here at home and I have baby dogs. So if you hear them barking, I'm going to apologize in advance for that. So um, I rolled around the idea of creating a podcast for a while, Um, looked into it, didn't really know exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't really have a certain skill or an idea. It's just a little bit of everything. Um, So my husband, Frank, helped me figure out how to record it. Um, We even found some music that we can use, um, how to upload it and put it together. He's really good at that kind of stuff, and I'm not. And that's why it's taken me so long to commit to this because I just, I'm just not really good with technology, but he's really awesome. So that's the reason we have a podcast. So why a podcast? Why not a blog? So let's face it. I'm much better at talking than writing. Ask literally everybody. Um, I'm a horrible speller. So blogging, I have to, and, but I'm, super particular with grammar, so I just, there's so much. I have to go on Grammarly, I have to check my spelling, get somebody to proofread it, it's just a mess. So, um, I decided talking is definitely my skill, (laughs) and I know some of my friends will listen to this and be like, yeah, getting her to shut up is, is really the, um, the key here. I could talk for days, and I guess that's why me and Frank work so well together, because he's not a talker, I am a talker, so we just mesh really well. So, um, I make some posts on Facebook. Really, they're on Instagram, and I share them to Facebook. And I just created a page, a message for Mrs. McMahon on Facebook that I'm sharing that to. Um, But if I wrote everything I wanted to say about those posts, they would be 12 million miles long. It'd be literally a novel. So, um, and I... I don't really read, like, if there's a really long post on Instagram, like, I will skim through it, but I really won't won't read it word for word. So, the things that I want to say, I find very helpful. Most of the things that I post on, on Instagram and Facebook are not for everybody else. They're definitely for me, but I feel like if I can grow from them and I need them, then maybe somebody else can find some good use for them, too, and apply them. So, I just... I just feel like more people will listen to the podcast because you can listen to it when you're driving or, you know, in your downtime. And I can actually get my message across. Um, And I feel like a podcast is is more a way to build a personal connection. It's kind of hard, you know, um, to catch somebody's tone or if it's humorous or if it's not. Um, And I'm just not a big, like, I, I read, but it has to be something very, very interesting. So that's why I decided a podcast over a blog. So, like I said at the beginning, this is a little bit of everything, um, but I wanted to begin my first podcast with something I think that is truly, truly important, and it's kind of where everything else comes from, um, and that's happiness. I believe that we can truly find unconditional happiness. So what does that mean, unconditional happiness? Happiness 
is a product of our mind and a way we choose to live our life. Um, most people, I feel like, confuse pleasure with happiness. Um, and we really need to learn the difference between the two. Pleasure is a fleeting feeling. It's short-lived. It most time depends on our five senses, what we see, what we taste, what we smell, what we touch, all bring us pleasure. Happiness is a state of mind. It comes from within us. Um, it's not dependent upon anything. It has no conditions. It's unconditional. Um, I feel like everything in life is based on this principle. If you can understand what happiness truly is, then you can start looking at life differently. And I feel like that's where the magic happens. I feel like that if you're coming from a, a happy state of mind, your world changes. The way you see things change, the way you, you know, the decisions you make change, your relationships change, everything, everything changes if you are coming from a good place. And that's where we all have to get is that, you know, get to that good place. So I have what I like to call happy habits. Um, I'm a happy person by nature. I'm very optimistic. I'm very positive. Um, I'm solution driven. I'm not, I don't, I don't focus on the problem. I focus on the solution. It just comes naturally to me. And I know a lot of people aren't like that. Um, but I, I have things that I do intentionally and some of them aren't intentionally. And they're kind of summed up in this section of the podcast is happy habits. So what are some things that you can do, create habits of that will help encourage you to be happy? Um, so one of the biggest ones, and this is so important to me because it, it, it hits so close to home for me, is to be busy but not to be rushed. I can't stand sitting around doing nothing. I have to be busy. But let me tell you something that stresses me out more than anything. It's being rushed. Um, I can't stand it. Like it, it just, it makes me want to just shut down. So um, feeling rushed causes stress, at least for me. Like it will stress me out. So the struggle is, is how do you find a way to be just busy enough without overwhelming yourself? So how do you, where is that line and everybody's different, so everybody has to find this on their own. That line that says, hey, I'm not sitting here bored going out of my mind. Thank you, quarantine. Um, but I'm I'm busy, but it's not like I can't keep up and I'm drowning and there's too much and I'm just going to have an emotional breakdown and shut down. Um, that's the real, the real struggle is to find that balance. So um, one thing that helps me with this, um, and I'm terrible at it, but I'm working on it, is when I'm deciding whether or not to do something, and this is more not on, um, like, you know, busy with your job, this is kind of personal level, um, if somebody says, hey, do you want to do something, if it's anything less than, oh my gosh, that's going to be so fun, or that would be amazing, or absolutely I want to do that, then say no. If you don't want to do it and it's not going to make you happy, don't do it. I mean, that's that's a big thing is knowing when to say yes and knowing when to say no. And that's super hard for me because I kind of feel, well, I mean, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just support them. Maybe I should. even though, And then you really don't have a great time. And then you're rushing around trying to fit it in most of the time because you didn't really have time to do it in the first place. So know when to say yes and know when to say no. Another thing that I have to work on, because I am a, a small business owner, is having a healthy work-life balance. That's super hard, um, because being a small business owner, I don't have a 9-to-5. I don't have um, a certain set of hours that I work. Um, I'm working on that more, because I know it is achievable, but right now, I mean, I kind of feel like it's Whatever comes up, I've, that's what I've got to deal with. Whatever time it comes up, that's when I deal with it. So, um, but but you have to work on those things. Just because my life seems crazy um, with work and things coming up at all hours, I have to try to structure that. Um, I made a post on 
Instagram or Facebook, probably Instagram to Facebook. And, and, and I said something and kind of like, you know, you're responsible for your work-life balance. I mean, it doesn't matter how demanding your clients are. You have control over how you deal with that. If you answer phone calls and emails till 1130 at night, then you're telling people that you're available for that. And they're going to continue to do it. So as, as much as we like to kind of pass that off of, oh, I can't help it. That's just what's going on. I have to deal with it. There are emergencies and then there's non-emergencies. And yes, you do have to deal with the emergencies, but not everything's an emergency. A lot of the things that we deal with on personal time that are work-related, they can wait till tomorrow. I mean, it's not, it's not going to burn down overnight 90% of the time. I would just say 95% of the time. So that's a big important part too. Um, so I get that's the first point is be busy, don't be rushed, and kind of find that balance of you know, keeping yourself busy, but don't overwhelm yourself to where you're rushing around like a crazy person because we're crazy enough as it is. At least I am, ask my husband. So um, another one is happiness is contagious, so surround yourself with people who are happy and supportive. Nothing will bring you down faster and smother your happiness than to be around a negative Nancy. You need to find your positive polys because negative Nancy's will find a problem for every solution. And that gets exhausting. So make sure you're surrounding yourself with people who are happy and supportive. Um, this one's so big. Stop sweating the small stuff. Stop being consumed with things that are out of your control because it's a point. It's pointless. It's a waste of your time and it's going to make you miserable. And I have another podcast coming up where I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and it's probably uh, podcast two or three because I have four back to back. I think that I'm recording four or five um, where I go into that because so many people let so many things that are not in their control, like weigh them down and it steals their joy and it makes them miserable, grumpy people. Um, so just stop doing that. No, nobody, nobody's going to benefit from you doing that, especially you. Um, here's another one. Celebrate other people's successes. Oh my goodness, can we just all be everybody's cheerleader? Because I am. If you're doing something and you're succeeding at it, I'm so happy for you. I don't care what it is. I'm happy for you. It could be the smallest, silliest thing. Like like my friend Leah, <laughs> she planted tomato. I think it was tomatoes, tomatoes from the seeds. And she was so happy that she called me when she first saw the little bit of green coming out of of the soil and she was so so happy and then she tagged me on a Mimi meme however you say that Mimi on Facebook of you know how excited she was that her plants were growing and they were doing so good I was so happy for her it was the smallest little thing but that was this big success for her she was so happy about it so I was happy about it so if you find yourself having a problem celebrating other people's success here's some things you need to work on with yourself um, you need to stop comparing yourself to other people. A lot of times we aren't happy for other people because we aren't experiencing success that they're experiencing right when they're experiencing it. Cut it out. Quit comparing yourself. Your journey and their journey is not the same thing. Where they are in life isn't always where you are in life. And sometimes people are better at some things than you are. Let's, I mean... That's obviously never me. I mean, I'm the best at everything. Just kidding. That was a joke. But sometimes they're better than things than you are. And so you're going to be like, well, I'm not going to be happy for them because I can't do what it is that they're doing. You know what? I may not ever be able to grow a tomato plant, but that doesn't mean I can't be happy for Leah's tomato plants. Stop comparing yourself. Um, turn your jealousy into motivation. Instead of saying, okay, so... Um, I saw on Facebook that somebody I know got this big side-by-side -side jacked up something or other to play in the mud on a deer lease or whatever. Instead of me being jealous about that, which I'm not, but if I were, just if I were be jealous about that, why don't I just say, well, that's motivating me to do what I have to do to get one of those. Maybe I need to save. Maybe I quit, need to quit eating out as much. Maybe I need to find a side hustle or something. Why don't you turn that jealousy into motivation so you can achieve that? Um, so that's another way to make sure you keep yourself in check. 
Um, let's admit it. There's enough success to go around. There is enough success for everybody. You can you can have your success. They can have their success, and we can all be happy for each other. Um, lastly, when we're talking about celebrating other people's success, you never know how hard someone's worked for the success that they're having. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what challenges they're facing. You don't know how hard it was for them to get to where they are. So quit being jealous. So treat everyone with kindness and respect, especially if you think they don't deserve it. This is a really good happy habit. It's called taking the high road, people, and it makes you feel be better. Hello, happiness. Like, if you don't stoop to somebody's level, you really feel better about yourself. So, happy habit. Um, spend more time in nature because it really slows us down. Take a walk in the park. You know, go hiking. Something in nature. It slows us down. Get away from um, all the technology, all the things that distract us. Go spend some time in nature. Be in solution mode, not problem mode. Oh, my goodness. If you stay in problem mode... You're going to be miserable. If all you think about is all the problems everywhere, all the time, you're going to be miserable. Start trying to find some solutions. Um, I've, I've, I've been, I can't remember if I've read it or I've been told it, but it's the 80-20 rule. Spend 20% of your time looking at the problem and 80% on the solution, and it will change the way that you see those things. Um, express gratitude daily. Find something that you are grateful for every day. It will definitely cheer you up. Um, dream big, dream big, chase those dreams, create eight achievable goals and go after those things. That's going to create so much happiness when you're actually trying to chase that dream, no matter what it is. Maybe you just want to be a better cook, whatever that dream may be. It doesn't have to be something big and huge. So don't think really big. Sometimes dreams can be small, but they're really big to you. Um, don't make excuses. Take responsibilities for your mistakes. You have to understand that failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, happy people don't fail. Happy people just learn. I love that phrase. I, I say it all the time. Um, spend money on experiences, not things. Can, can I get an amen? Let's go somewhere for Christmas. Don't get me a bunch of stuff. Then in a month, it's just in a box. Probably going to Goodwill because I'm not going to use it. Um, let's do some stuff. That's what I say. Have a morning and evening routine. I struggle with this one, but I'm trying to put something together um, that I can work on um, that is easy for me to do a few things in the morning, a few things in the afternoon, and I'm kind of going to try to add on from there. But I think that's really important, too. I think it sets your whole day up and then helps you unwind, which creates happiness. Um, here's the big one. Use your signature strength. So I Googled this because um, I've always heard play to your strengths, not to your weaknesses. So I'm like, well, how do you find out what your strengths are? So I Googled this and I took a character test. It's called uh, viacharacter.org. I literally just found it on Google. Um, and my top character strengths turned out to be love, humor, hmm, go figure there, uh, spirituality, leadership, and perspective. So if you have time, you can go there, try to figure out what yours are, and it might tell you what you're really good at. So that was via character.org. I'm sure there's tons of them out there. Um, so that's that's um, those happy habits. So which of these do you think you would benefit the most from? So that's a big list of things. So which one, as I was going through that, did you say, oh, well, that sounds like a great idea. Pick one. Just one and say, I'm going to focus on doing this every single day or every single week or however often you want to do it. Um, the more you can practice any of these, the happier you'll be. Um, so my, my main focus right now is the morning and evening routine. I kind of want to set my day up for success and happiness and then be able to unwind and get good nights, you know, rest. Um, so I usually start off really good by Monday and then by Wednesday, I'm back to not doing anything on that routine. So I put like three or four things on my goals. That's what I'm going to be working for. And then I'm just going to keep building until I get like a solid one, that uh, solid routine that I'm, I'm happy with. So I'll wrap it up by ending with a quote because I love ending with a quote and kind of applying that quote. So I love this quote. It, it's always bring your own sunshine. No matter what the weather is, no matter what situation you find yourself in per se, bring the sunshine. Be positive, be happy, and shine on. So I just want to say thanks to everyone who made it all the way through the end. It's been about 20 minutes. 
Um, all two or three of y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty sure the two or three are my mom, my dad, and Frank. They kind of have to listen. Y'all are the real M MVPs. Um, my dad watches YouTube constantly, so he probably made it all the way through, um, unless he got distracted by YouTube <laughs> while listening. If he knows how to listen and do YouTube at the same time, which I'm not sure if he does or not. Uh, my mom, she probably made it to the end if she listened before her 2 p.m. nap time. Hopefully she didn't listen to it right before 2 p.m. because then she probably it probably put her to sleep. But um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She probably made it through the end. Um, Frank never listens to me, so this is probably playing in the background as he's working on whatever current project he's working on. But hopefully he heard, you know, something. Um, but seriously, thanks for listening. Um, if I have to say one thing about this episode, it would be I knew exactly what to do. But in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. And all my office fans will get that.